In this tutorial, I'll show you how to get started with the Mapbox Navigation SDK for iOS. So the first thing I want to point you to is our Navigation SDK website. Uh, it has installation guides, ex examples, API reference, and a lot of other resources uh, that help you understand how our navigation works and what it can offer for your application. To install the Navigation SDK, uh, the first thing you need to do is set up credentials. When you create an a Mapbox account for free, uh, you have access to an account dashboard that will let you add access tokens. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create an access token. And this access token is going to be the first of two that uh, allows me to uh, download the navigation SDK onto my computer. So I'm going to call this download. And uh, by default, the public scopes uh, are fine, but I actually need an additional scope in order to download the navigation SDK. And that's this downloads read scope. So I'll check that. And then I'll create a click access token. Sorry, I'll need to enter my password and two factor authentication code if it's set up. And before I navigate away from this, I'll need to copy the download access token. So with that, I need to create a, uh, a new file. Uh, it's going to be a plain text file. It's going to include that access token along with other details uh, that allow me to um, access the downloads API. I'm going to put this in my home folder here and call it .NET RC. I need to uncheck this option in, uh, in text edit so I can save it that way. That's all set, so I can close that and forget about that file. And that will allow Xcode, um, uh, uh, when I uh, install the navigation SDK, to find uh, the, uh, the, the access token, which is sort of like a password. So I'm going to create a new, uh, a new Xcode project. I'll just make it a simple application for now. We support storyboards. Um, it's also possible to create a uh, Swift UI application that uses um, that uses navigation SDK, but I'm just going to stick to the defaults for now and actually create uh, the UI encode just so you can see how that works. All right, so um, I've got just a basic application here. Um, I'm going to set this to uh, run on an iPhone 13. The first thing I need to do uh, now that I've set up this project is um, uh, add the second access token. So I already created an access token for the downloads API, but I need to create another access token so that I can um, have this application connect to Mapbox servers at runtime. So I'm going back to uh, the access tokens page and create a new access token. And I'm going to call it navigation, I guess. This time, I accept all the public scopes, and I don't add any secret scopes. So I don't add the downloads read um, scope. This access token just needs to do the normal things. Again, no additional token restrictions, and I click add uh, create token. I'll copy that. And now when I go back to Xcode, I'll go into the info P list. That's where you can figure a lot of the application wide settings. And right here at the top, at the root of this info P list, I'll click the plus button to add a new entry. This entry is called MBX access token in camel case. And I'll set that to that access token that I just created. So now, um, I should be good to go in order to uh, to install the navigation SDK. To do that, I'll go to File, Add Packages, and I'll enter the URL to the navigation SDK. Uh, so to get that, I'll go back to these installation instructions, the ones I've been walking you through.
you know, have this URL, which is the GitHub URL for the repository that contains all the source code for the navigation SDK. I'll enter that into the search bar here. Xcode found it. And now I'll change the dependency rule to be up to the next major version. And I'll start with uh, the current stable version. Um, right now, when I'm recording this, the current stable version is 2.7.0. Uh, you can go to our website to see what the latest version is. And I'll click add, add package. I will grab my coffee or coffee substitute. There are two packages that we provide. Core navigation is uh, just the non-UI um, spatial routing, um, offline downloads, uh, that, all that goodness. Mapbox navigation it provides the UI, text-to-speech, um, kind of that functionality. So typically, most people are going to use Mapbox navigation. The reason you might choose Mapbox core navigation uh, is if you're uh, doing some kind of advanced application, maybe something for wearables where you don't need um, any UI at all, or something um, innovative with uh, assistive technology for um, the visually impaired, for example. Um, but I'm going to choose Mapbox navigation. Add package, and it added all the dependencies automatically. So if I run my application now, you'll see that there's uh, nothing to see here, but that's good. My application worked. So I'm going to quit that, and then the next step is to um, to add a map to the to the home uh, to the home or the main screen of the application. To do that, I'm going to import the map SDK. Mapbox Maps, um, which is one of the dependencies that got downloaded automatically because I added Mapbox Navigation. To add a map to the screen, I need to add a property to my view controller. That's of type map view. And then I'm going to add a map view to my, uh, to my uh, home screen. So at first, I'm going to create it as a map view. And I'll show you uh, some customizations that I want to do later on. Uh, this map view is going to take up the full screen. It's going to resize with the window, and uh, it's going to be added to the to the root view of the view controller. So, click start here, and you can see here's a map that's centered on Null Island. Now we probably want to do a little bit more with this map. So um, I'm going to show you next how to uh, display a route on this map. To do that, first I need to, uh, to import some, some additional packages. So Mapbox Directions is the package that lets me make a request to the Mapbox Directions API. Now I'm going to uh, add a couple of waypoints. Um, waypoints are the origin, destination, any intermediate um, destinations that I want to go to. Um, so I'm going to have a route that goes from Cupertino to Mount Tamalpex in uh, north of San Francisco. And then I'm going to create a, uh, a navigation route options using, uh, using this, uh, these two waypoints. So here are the route options. First, I'm going to start out with route options. Uh, to show you how a raw navigation, uh, raw directions API request will look. And I'll create it using these two waypoints, origin and destination. If I wanted to, so by default, these directions will be for driving directions that take traffic into account. If I want to have cycling and walking directions, I can specify an additional profile identifier. But I'm going to stick to driving for now because it's a long way to Mount Tam. Now I'm going to, with those options, now I'm going to request those options. So using the shared directions object, I'm going to calculate the route options. And in my completion handler, I'll, ha I'll have access to a result. I need to switch on that result to see whether it succeeded or not. So in the failure case, I'll handle first, um, 
I want to print out the error. Now, typically in a real app, I would show a, an alert box or uh, offer to redo the, the request in some other way. But for now, I'm just going to print out the error. In the success case, which we hope to get to, I'll capture the response here. And with the response, I can do a number of things. This is raw data um, that, I can, that I get back from the directions API. So it tells me where the raw data about where to turn, um, about how long each step, step will take. Uh, but I'm, uh, I think the, the user will be more interested in a visual representation of the route. So to do that, I'm going to um, switch, I'm going to switch the, um, uh, the map view for a navigation map view, because a navigation map view uh, knows how to uh, display a route. But that navigation map view doesn't come from the map SDK. It comes from Mapbox navigation. And that's the package that contains all the UI that I mentioned earlier. So I'm going to con finish converting it into a navigation map view. And when you're using um, the navigation SDK, you can use it with a raw route options, but a raw route options isn't optimized for turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Um, it's really only optimized for um, a very, very basic uh, display. So I'm going to turn it into a navigation route options, which is optimized for this purpose. Navigation route options comes from an inter intermediate uh, package that I mentioned earlier, Mapbox Core Navigation, because it's not part of the UI, but it is part of the navigation SDK. So now that I have uh, a navigation map view and navigation route options, I can display that on the map view. So map view dot show, uh, Mapbox, uh, map, map view dot show will uh, show the route on the map. But I wanted to do a little bit more than that. I want to showcase the route, um, which will also zoom the map, the map to fit and show any uh, annotations that kind of help the user know what's going on. So the route comes from the response, is part of the response. Actually, the response contains multiple routes um, because maybe there's multiple ways to get to Mount Tam. So I'll get these routes. And to handle the case where there are no routes, uh, I will coalesce that with an empty array. So let's see what that looks like. I'll click play again. Lovely. So now I can see that I have a choice between taking I-280 or taking I-680, uh, I-880. In a real application, I would make this an interactive map. Uh, and we have a, a guide in our, uh, an example in our website that shows you how to add a uh, tap um, gesture recognizer so that when you tap anywhere on the map, it will uh, choose a, it will let you choose a different route based on that tap's location. So the user will be able to tap here and it will switch to an alternative route. Um, but for now, I'm just going to be uh, using this uh, more static representation here. As you can see, it shows the route line, it shows the destination, and it also shows that there's gonna be some traffic along the route. So that's nice, um, but I do want to actually let the user um, navigate to that route, not just show them where it is. To do that, I will create a navigation view controller. Navigation view controller is a class that's provided by the Mapbox navigation package. And I can create using um, just a few simple parameters. Um, and if you need more customization, there's another version of this that takes some options. So I'll pass in the response. And it takes a route index. So when I look at this, there were two routes that came back. The first route, that came back is the main, the, main, uh, the main route, the one that's best, either shorter or easier or less traffic. And then the other alternative routes will be later on in that array. So the one I want to navigate along right now is route index, the route at index zero. I also need to pass in the route options that I originally created to make this request. 
with that view controller, now I can show it. So I'll present it and I'll have it animated. Let's see what that looks like. Uh oh, we crashed. It looks like I missed this step. Like it says here in the uh, in the precondition failure, I need to add another uh, entry to my info.plist file. So I'll copy that, go back to my info.plist, and then click that plus sign like I did before. This time I'm adding a when in use description. When you set up the map SDK, one of the things that you set up is the user location, which includes the when in use description. We have a similar guide for our navigation SDK with a when in use description. And we have some suggested language right here. So I'll copy that, put that in here. Like I said, you can customize that to explain what, what, what else your application will be using with the user's location data. And uh, I'll go and run that again, and hopefully we won't crash anymore. Uh-oh, there's one more, uh, one more step I need to add. So this is not just a, uh, a location app that shows your map on, uh, shows your location on a map, but it's also a navigation app. So a user will typically expect that um, they'll continue to get location updates. They'll continue to get um, voice instructions, even though they've locked the phone or they've switched to another application in the meantime. So to do that, we need to uh, add a capability to the application. The easiest way to do that is to go into the project editor. That's the first row in the sidebar. And switch to the uh, application target, which I called navigation, and then switch to the signing in capabilities tab. In this tab, there's a plus button here in the toolbar, and I can choose a background mode. The only mode that we really need for the navigation SDK is the audio, airplay, and picture-in-picture -picture mode. That's the one that will let the uh, Texas speech engine run in the background. So let's play it again. And hopefully we won't crash. There we go. Drive Northeast. So what I'm showing you here is what it looks like when um, I'm using the iOS simulators uh, location simulation feature. It's set to freeway drive. I can restart that to show you what it looks like when uh, when I drive south on North Dayonza Boulevard. Set the location again, and you can see that uh, we're capable of showing you uh, showing the user where to go if they go off off route and I need to reroute. So this is turn by turn navigation using Mapbox. Um, if you, uh, there's a number of features that uh, I want to point out on this, uh, on the screen. So as you can see, it shows the route, speed limits, guidance instructions. Um, it also shows an alternative route that you can take. Um, I'm going to click on the map to, sh to show that. In a half mile, take exit 12 hours. And you can see that the, uh, instructions updated automatically. And if I click this button to show the overview, you can see that no, I'm no longer taking 280. I'm taking I see uh, I uh, I eighty to get to the North Bay. Exit twelve A onto California eighty five North toward Mountain View. I want to also point out that the text to speech instructions uh, are uh, announced using a voice that's a little nicer than the one that you get normally using AV Foundation. Another feature in this screen that you can see here is this feedback button. If, you, if the user sees anything that is unusual, um, maybe a road is closed that we didn't expect, or there's some other thing like um, a wrong speed limit, they can click this feedback button on their, on their phone, and it will give them an opportunity to provide feedback and say what's wrong. 
And then uh, if I'm curious about what else, what else I need to do after, uh, after this step, I can tap on the top bar and I get a full list of instructions. A lot of the things you see on this screen are customizable, not just the map style, but also the color scheme of the surrounding UI or the layout, in fact. Um, and you can even build your own UI uh, using the uh, individual classes that we provide as part of the Mapbox navigation package. We have examples of all those customizations on our website, and uh, there are all full, full API reference uh, documentation as well on our website that you can consult. Now that I've shown you what our turn-by-turn -turn navigation looks like, I'm going to exit out of here. I'm back on the main map, and I can get back to my code and continue customizing it. And that is Mapbox navigation using our navigation SDK for iOS.